Hey guys, what's going on? Thanks for swinging by. I sure do appreciate it. So this time we're going to be talking about training and we're going to be talking specifically on low light or white light types of training. Now this isn't going to be the run around like Grand Thumb wearing plaid and NVGs and shooting stuff up. That's not what this is about. This is actually about a standard civilian uh, utilizing either a handheld light or a weapons mounted uh, light in dark or low light situations. This was put on over at Tallgrass Shooting Sports. You guys know Tallgrass. That's where I do all of my gun and gear reviews out on the range. So thanks so much for Mike and Lisa for pulling this together. And it was taught by Chuck Haggart. He's kind of locally and regionally known in my area as a very good and expert uh, firearms instructor. He has, my understanding, uh, over 20 years in law enforcement. He's been called as an expert witness when it comes to utilizing uh, force in a, you know, a police shooting type of situation and whether or not the training in low light situations was up to par. So those types of things. He talked about that uh, during the course and then kind of like listening to those stories. It was interesting to hear his take on some of those situations. But he pulled together a class, a small class, because of our, you know, social distancing thing that we had to do uh, right now because of our current situation. But we were able to get together and get on the range and get some training in. I really, really did like this course. So I wanted to talk about kind of an overview of the course and uh, a number of the different things that I learned from this course. Now, one of the interesting things that I did learn about this is that uh, Chuck was completely open to everybody's perspective uh, in how they would utilize what they learned and apply that to themselves. And a great example is I have a Glock 19 with a weapons mounted light to it. That weapons mounted light may or may not be what I want to use from time to time. One of the things that Chuck taught in his course was mainly focused on handheld lights. And the reason for that is weapons mounted lights are useful and he acknowledges the fact that they are useful. However, they're not ideal when searching for whatever. Uh, something goes bump in the night and you decide that you want to go take a look at to what that was, um, a weapons mounted light may not be the best thing to be searching around your house, especially if you have a teenage son or daughter that decided to sneak out and then they're coming back in and woke you up. You may have a situation where you're muzzling a family member and that is not, uh, it's not good, right? <laughs> Needless to say, all of that is to say that Chuck knows what he's talking about. Uh, he's been referred to as a flashlight ninja, and a lot of the things that he was showing off, some of the things that he was te teaching and talking about in his course, really did show that he was extremely competent in what he was talking about. I will warn you, this is going to be a lot of me talking. Uh, I did get some B-roll, uh, some clips to show you while I'm talking through this, but unfortunately I didn't get as much as I wanted because half the class was done at night. So filming at night is pretty difficult, especially with the gear that I have. And fortunately you're just gonna have to listen to me talk. <laughs> Try to keep things lively as best I can. So let's talk about the course. The course was split up, as I mentioned, into a day portion and a night portion. We met up about four o'clock in the afternoon. Chuck brought us together, introduced himself, and then did something I really did like. He went around the room and asked everyone to talk about what gear that they brought to the course. What holster, what pistol, and what flashlight did they bring? And I really did like that. Specifically because it gave confidence to the instructor to know that the students came with the right gear, and then it allowed the students to hear and see some of the other products that were going to be used for that course so that you could see whether or not those things worked well or didn't work so well. And that was another piece that I took away after the course is that I need to really look at my gear and pistol setup a little bit closer uh, to make myself a little bit more uh, proficient in, in utilizing those in a low light situation. We'll get into that here in just a second. One of the major things that Chuck really focused on, uh, like I said, was using a handheld light versus weapons mounted light. 
And there's another concept behind all of that as well. One of the interesting things that he talked about, and this is something that you have to kind of buy into. And if you don't, that's perfectly fine. He wasn't saying that this was the end all fact, but it's something that you do have to kind of buy into. That aspect was if you're in a dark situation and someone turns a light on, you're inherently going to turn and look at that light, whether it be just a glance in that direction or you're going to turn your body into that direction or whatever the case may be, you're inherently going to go and look and see what's going on when that light comes on. If that's the case and it's a situation where you need to defend yourself, so that means you're going to retaliate or put rounds down range, more than likely your point of aim, your point of focus is going to be that light. So if you're going to start cracking off rounds and unintentionally you may be aiming at that light. That was number two. He went on further to say, if we believe that number one and number two is correct, he then posed a question to the class, would you clear your house or would you clear a dark alley or whatever the case may be with a headlamp? Knowing that a person's point of aim may, may very well be that light. Actually, the answer would be no, of course not. If we believe that the point of aim is going to be a light in a dark situation, then we would not want a target on our forehead. So then he went on further to say, if we believe those three things are true, then would you want a weapons mounted light in front of your face, searching a room, a hallway, a dark house, uh, an alleyway? Again, he's like, that's pretty much the same thing as having a headlamp. Now, naturally, none of this is set in stone. This is just his perspective, his opinion, and why he teaches and focuses more on handheld lights than he did weapons-mounted lights through this course. Something I took away, something I really did like uh, in understanding that perspective a little bit better, and it allowed me to realize that I shouldn't be so reliant on my weapons-mounted lights. So that is uh, a really good takeaway from the course. Once we got done with kind of the classroom safety spun, spin up and everything, uh, which he spent about 20 minutes talking about safety because we were going to be shooting at night. That's something I also did like. Uh, we went out to the range and we got to work in the daylight. Now, why do we start everything in the daylight? And that's pretty simple. It's to create a foundation. He wants to ensure that everyone understood the concepts of what a modified FBI stance is. So a modified FBI stance is holding the light away from your head at a 45 degree angle, uh, kind of above your head as well. Uh, so that helps kind of prevent any rounds coming directly at you per se. From there, once we've decided that we need to engage a target, we see a threat and it needs to be engaged, then there's two different techniques that we can use utilizing a handheld light. The first is the neck index or the knuckles to cheek. So you take the light from up here and you bring it down to knuckles to cheek and then you have your firearm out in front of you. Two different ways to do that is once you bring that in, you can either bring it up and cant your firearm to place rounds down range to help medicate that recoil, or you can step into it, holding your hand vertical, stepping into your firearm to help mitigate that recoil because you are shooting single-handed. The other technique is the Harris technique, and this is a technique that has been uh, used for decades, and you've probably seen it on TV, and it's nothing more than, you know, placing your the back of your hands together, applying pressure, and using your flashlight as a kind of a stabilizer, your wrist and your flashlight as a stabilizer for your pistol. Those work really well for the long mag lights because you can place the mag light against your firing forearm uh, to help create that uh, more stable platform to shoot from. But it also allows that flashlight to be out in front of you as well. Naturally, when you get into a situation where you need to use force, all bets are off. All techniques um, kind of go out the window anyway. So. These are the ones that he recommends, but in those situations, there's he's like there's nothing wrong with you dropping your lights and transitioning to your weapons mounted lights if you feel more confident that way. Uh, so I really did appreciate him kind of going back and forth through the different techniques. 
to include weapons mounted lights as well. So we worked on those in the daylight and then we took a break and had a really nice dinner uh, there at Living Water Ranch, which is co-located with uh, Tallgrass Shooting Sports. And it really just enjoyed it. It was a good afternoon to uh, just get to know everybody a little bit better, kind of talk a little bit about what's going on with the course. Once we were done with dinner, we went down into the basement of the dining facility and uh, went into a kind of a darker hallway. And Chuck was able to talk about search techniques utilizing the modified FBI stance. And what he really wanted to focus and highlight is pieing a corner or coming around a corner with just a stagnant, uh, steady beam of light is not very conducive for the individual who is doing the searching. If they're getting ready to walk into an ambush type of situation, coming around a corner with a light on is easy for the other person to understand when that person's about to crest that corner. So Chuck was showing us how to create a chaotic kind of way of moving. And it's nothing more than using your flashlight and moving it around. So you're going to paint paths of light on the ground to kind of show you where you're going. All the while, you're also you know, bouncing light off of walls, you're moving it left, right, up and down, and just creating this very chaotic flash of light from around a corner to confuse someone that may be on the other side that wants to do you harm. And that's something I really did appreciate. And it really kind of showed his um, ninja skills uh, when it comes to using a, uh, using a white light. Once we got done with the hallway presentation, we went back out to the range. At that point, it was pretty much dark and we were uh, basically going back through everything that we learned during the day, now at night. And we went right back into shooting at our targets from starting with the modified FBI stance and working into our uh, neck index or knuckles to cheek and or moving into our harris uh, technique as well. From there, we went into a culminating event where they put barrels in front of us to represent cover and then we had to shoot a target either from the right or the left. And what he encouraged us to do was to utilize both techniques, the neck index and the harris, depending on which side that we were shooting from. So if he called right, he encouraged us to use the harris technique to peer around the cover um, right. and fire on target, or left side, we're using neck index and exposing as little of our body as possible coming around that barrier. And that's something I really did enjoy as well. Once we were able to get through everybody on that event, he then had the guys with uh, weapons mounted lights to come back up and do the same drill, either shooting from the left or the right and utilizing your weapons mounted light. The biggest thing that he said when it comes to weapons mounted lights and said that if you're going to use that, that you need to ensure that as you toggle your lights on and off, you are using your non-shooting thumb, right? So depending on what type of light you have and what type of switch you have, I run a PL Mini from Olight and it's very easy for me to utilize my thumb to access or turn that switch on and off. Uh, so that's extremely helpful. And he did that reverting back to the uh, story of him being called in as an expert witness to talk about using a weapons mounted light in that situation where a police officer mistakenly shot a suspect. Um, so that was a good takeaway. So from the entire course itself, one of the things that I found out is my everyday carry, which is a Glock 19 with RMR, may not be the right choice, and the techniques of using the neck index or the harris may not be the right choice for that pistol. I may need to look at either a different pistol or uh, different techniques or you know, trying to figure out how am I going to defend myself if I'm in a low light situation. The reason why I say that is when utilizing an RMR and the neck index, I am now backlighting 
my pistol, which means that I am losing the ability to find my red dot because the RMR is now completely lit up and I didn't really particularly care for that. So I did find that I was more accurate and more stable using the Harris, even though it is kind of quote unquote a dated technique, it still worked. But ultimately I found that I was most accurate using my weapons mounted lights. So what's, what's kind of my takeaway on all of this? Number one is either I'm going to have to move away from the RMR when I know that I'm going to be out and about during uh, times of low light. So like say I'm gonna take my daughter to the movie. I know the movie's gonna get out late at night. Um, maybe I shouldn't carry my Glock 19 that time. I should probably have a handheld and maybe my P365 or I have a Glock 17 that I could probably run as well. Something without an RMR to uh, prevent me from getting that backwash into my face off the backside of the pistol. And uh, or I go ahead and utilize my weapons mounted, uh, my pistol mounted light, uh, knowing that I'm probably going to muzzle things I may not want to. Those are some con heavy considerations I'm gonna have to take into mind as I move forward. In addition to that, uh, there's a lot of techniques that he offered as well in um, practicing at home when doing dry fire. Uh, so a lot of great takeaways from this course. And that's what I would have to say to you guys. Have you done any low light or white light um, training here in the last couple of years? It's become more and more popular. And I think it's actually applicable for uh, a lot of us out there, especially, you know, there's a myth that most, you know, crooks are going to try to break into your home at night. Uh, we're finding that that's not necessarily the case, but it does happen still. So is this something that you're interested in? Would you guys take this type of course? Sound off in the comment section down below. Again, I know I was long-winded and I know that there's a lot of information to cover, but I can tell you this is probably one of the best courses that I've been through. I've been through a lot of great courses, but this really took me out of my comfort zone and put me in a situation that I don't have a lot of experience in and I learned an awful lot. So I do appreciate uh, Tallgrass Shooting Sports for setting this up and Chuck Haggard for uh, putting this course on. A lot of great information and I hope you guys were able to take some considerations away from this video as well. Get an opportunity to go ahead and get that type of training. I highly suggest it. You guys are going to become uh, better stewards and uh, better trained moving forward. So. so that's all I got this time. Thanks for swinging by, guys. I really do appreciate it. I hope you guys have a great weekend and have a great week, and we will see you next time. As always, freedom through strength. Here comes a high five. Bye, y'all.